हाँ सर नमस्कार आज आज ही आज ही बस शुरू कर रहे हैं उनका आ जाएगा दस पंद्रह मिनट बाद में आप ऐसा है ना इसको लॉग इन कर लो उसके बाद में देख लेते हैं ठीक ठीक डॉक्टर रजनी जैन हेज डॉक्टर रमेश ज्वाइन डॉक्टर रजनी जैन अभी नहीं किया है आगे डॉक्टर साहब थैंक यू थैंक्स फॉर जॉइनिंग सर का ऑडियो नहीं चल रहा चलिए आई थिंक वेलकम प्रोफेसर रमेश चंद साहब नमस्कार थैंक यू थैंक यू सर लोकेश नमस्कार आई थिंक नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग सर नमस्कार प्रोफेसर साहब नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग नमस्कार जोशी जी नमस्कार अग्रवाल जी मैडम रजनी जी नमस्कार सर नमस्कार सिंह साहब भी हैं वेरी गुड वेरी गुड एक सिंह साहब नाइस टू सी यू आफ्टर लॉन्ग टाइम नमस्कार कैसे हैं आपका सुनते आप रिटायर होके काफी फेयर कम्प्लेक्शन हो गया आपका हो जाता है रिटायरमेंट के बाद नॉट एक्सपोजिंग यूर से बाहर नहीं जाते चलिए सब भगवान की कृपा है तो आई थिंक शुरू किया जा सकता है यस सर हाँ डॉक्टर ऑनरेबल प्रोफेसर रमेश चंद जी मेंबर एग्रीकल्चर नीति आयोग डॉक्टर त्रिलोचन महापात्रा जी सेक्रेटरी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर रिसर्च एजुकेशन एंड एजुकेशन एंड डायरेक्टर जनरल इंडियन काउंसिल ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर रिसर्च Dr. Umar Lale, President-elect for International Association of Agricultural Economists and Chief Guest of this evening. Dr. Mithun Jaya, former director NIAP and national director NAIP. Dr. P. K. Joshi, former director NIAP and director South Asia IFPRI. 
डॉक्टर आर सी अग्रवाल डेप्यूटी डायरेक्टर जनरल एजुकेशन आई सी आर अवर स्टीम गेस्ट दिस इवनिंग फैमिली मेंबर्स ऑफ प्रोफेसर दयाना झा अवर स्पेशल गेस्ट डॉक्टर सुरेश बाबू फ्रॉम इफ्री डॉक्टर टोमियो शिचरी फ्रॉम एफ एओ अदर डिस्टिंग्विश गेस्ट डॉक्टर ए के सिंह डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रसाद एंड फैकल्टी मेंबर्स ऑफ ने आप सीनियर ऑफिसर्स एंड डिग्नेटरीज फ्रॉम आई सी आर एंड डेली बेस्ड आई सी आर इंस्टीट्यूट डॉक्टर सुरेश पाल डायरेक्टर ने आप डिस्टिंग professionals distinguished guests neap staff ladies and gentlemen a very good evening to all of you and welcome to neap for celebration of its annual day we extend our hearty welcome to all the esteemed dignitaries present over here on behalf of entire neap staff it's indeed a very special occasion for us we are now entering 30th glorious year of our research life the recent covid times have brought us an opportunity to connect globally on this special evening and dr uma lele is with us that is the indicative uh, of this uh, opportunity just to inform all the guests that we are live on the facebook now may i now request direct dr suresh pal director nia for his welcome address Sir, please unmute yourself. Good evening and welcome to the Foundation Day program of NIAP. Dr. Ramesh Chand, Honorable Member of Niti Aayog, Dr. Trilochan Mahapatra, Honorable Secretary Dayar and Director General ICR, Dr. Uma Leleji, Most Respected Economist and President Elect of the International Association of Agriculture Economists. our former directors dr mrtunjya dr p k joshi dr r c agrawal deputy director general education family members of dr dayanath jha colleagues from icr cg centers particularly dr suresh babu and dr tomio sichiri colleagues from the national systems from niap students and friend I consider this a great privilege to welcome all of you on the occasion of Foundation Day of NIA. This is an important event of the institute and presence of honorable guests and colleagues this evening is indeed a great source of motivation for NIA staff. I extend a very warm welcome to Dr. Ramesh Chand and Dr. Mahapatra who are guiding us and the entire agriculture science community. it is always a pleasure to have dr ramesh chand with us to guide the institute on several matters you have initiated the expansion of the institute which have which has been endorsed by icr we are grateful to our honorable uh, secretary day and director general dr atilochan mahapatra for sparing his valuable time to grace this function in spite of his very very busy schedule sir you have been generous in supporting the institute in terms of scientific strength scientific manpower divisional setup and recognition of the scientist by the highest award of icr the support you have provided will go a long way in putting the institute on a higher growth path we welcome you sir to the institute and thank you for your time and support it is always a pleasure to welcome our former directors dr mrtunjya and dr joshi with whom i have a long association since my student days i thank them for sparing their valuable time to be with us this evening and in all other activities they are supporting uh, the institute i also welcome dr agrawal deputy dg and other senior colleagues and other guest at this function people foundation day is also special for us because we organize a lecture in the memory of our former director dr dayana jha we are grateful to dr uma lele who has very kindly agreed to deliver this lecture dr lele is a great supporter of nia and she will be presiding over 31st international conference next year in delhi we welcome you dr lele 
and thank you for your time particularly getting up early in the morning thank you very much we also place on record significant contributions made by all the former directors particularly dr c c maji the founding director we also pay our tribute to professor late professor as roy our teacher teacher of most of uh, the faculty here and the directors who maintain his uh, high standard of excellence and simplicity in professional and personal life in order to recognize the contribution of our teachers directors and colleagues a foundation day award has been established and the first award will be presented today just briefly to mention in 2019 the institute has made significant contribution to agriculture economics and policy research the scientists are publishing in high impact factor journals both multidisciplinary and economics journals besides our institute publications which are referred internationally the institute also provided policy input on farmers income to ds uh, department of agriculture cooperation and farmers welfare and department of fertilizers on fertilizer policy some important contributions are made in the area of agriculture sustainability of agriculture indian agriculture ecosystem services foresight on input markets and technology climate resilient agriculture value chain development micro irrigation and many more areas where the institute has contributed the institute work closely with indian council of agriculture research under the guidance of honorable director general on research impact and review of uh, research outcomes impact of covid 19 on agriculture and the economy with the increase in scientific manpower work and visibility of the institute is likely to increase in future esteemed <laughs> guests and colleagues strength of niap lies in the collective and collaborative efforts with other institutions and support of the council we shall continue to work on these principles foster partnership within and outside the national agriculture research system and strengthen policy interface of the council finally i thank icr my colleagues in niap member of institute management committee and research advisory committee for their cooperation and guidance in ensuring smooth functioning of the institute i thank each one of you for your presence today and being a source of strength for niap thank you very much thank you sir for welcoming the dignitaries and distinguished guests may i now request our deputy director general dr rc tawal to say a few words on this occasion uh, thank you madam uh, most uh, honorable dr ramesh sanji uh, uh, member uh, niti ayog dr uh, mahapatra ji uh, sakti dear dg icr Uh, our all uh, esteemed uh, senior colleagues, uh, Dr. Uh, Suresh Palji, the director of this institute, great institute. Uh, I'll not say much on this occasion because we have to listen to uh, Dr. Lele, Omar Lele. Uh, I would like to compliment and congratulate the institute, the great institute, which in a very short span, I think this was one of the youngest institute, but. the kind of impact it it has made uh, it's really uh, laudable it's really appreciable uh, we can see uh, here itself the, the great visionaries which are sitting in front of us uh, professor ramesh and you see uh, dr uh, joshi you can see how they have made the impact dr matunya they are all associated with this great institute so who so has been director has become really a great contributor in this national uh, policy level international level so that is uh, that is the uh, impact this institute has made we need not to uh, go into the further details but it's really uh, a great wonder and it's really a great pleasure that you are having this 13th uh, uh, dn jha memorial lecture today uh, dr jha's contribution need not to be narrated he is one of the 
the great again visionary and uh, found this institute and uh, your 29th annual uh, day i think uh, will again give you a lot of uh, more responsibilities because the more matured you become more responsibilities you take so i think uh, this day we, we can again commit to take more uh, commitments responsibilities for the nation cause which already you are doing so my all the uh, i wish all the best and i wish uh, good luck for the institute Thank you, but thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We are grateful for your encouragement and motivation. Ladies and gentlemen, on this occasion, we remember and acknowledge the contributions of our former directors. We have with us today Dr. Mithunjaya, Dr. P. K. Joshi, and Professor Ramesh Chand. They nurtured NIAP with great care and vision. We thank all the leaders of NIAP for providing impetus and required growth stimulus. for speedy growth and development we know that dr joshi has been a great leader and he always ignited young minds sir may i request you to say a few words on this occasion thank you uh, uh good evening and uh, good morning to friends from uh, us honorable co chairs uh, dr ramesh chan a member niti ayog uh, dr mahapatra secretary there and uh, dg icr Uh, today chief guest dr mohan lele uh, dr mitunja uh, family members of dr jha dr suresh pal dr pratap uh, my dear uh, niap staff members uh, some of the ddgs i can see uh, had directors of some of the icr and uh, distinguished uh, participants dr agrawal uh, uh, at the outset uh, my heartiest congratulations to all the niap staff for this 30th annual day celebration and organizing 13th uh, dana jha memorial lecture in virtual mode so say we have done something new here virtually uh, thank you dr suresh for giving me uh, an opportunity to share my some of the thoughts on this important occasion uh, first i am very proud that i was a part of niap in my professional journey i enjoyed uh, working tremendously in nip with many many of the colleagues and numerous partners and uh, stakeholders uh today i would like to remember uh, two of our former directors the late dr c c maji and the late dr diana jha for very ably steering the institute uh, both were great source of inspiration and motivation to all of us Uh, we are indebted to both of them for their great contribution in institution building and human resource development i pay my deep respect and homage uh, to uh, both of them a uh, later friends dr mitunja and dr ramesh chan acquired the command and took the institute uh, to uh, higher levels uh, we are proud of the present leadership Uh, dr suresh pal for very ably elevating the institute at this uh, on this occasion i uh, congratulate all the staff members of niap for their significant professional contribution and policy formulation at every stage uh, with the either icr or with the government of india heads off to all of you uh, we are proud of your great contribution uh, friends niap if i look from inside or also from outside i find that it is uniquely placed in the national agriculture research system i can see that unlike other icr institute it has to play uh, multiple responsibilities one is to strengthen the agricultural economics profession in icr institutes and agriculture universities uh, basically it is transforming agricultural economics profession for the 21st century second is to enhance uh competence of its own staff to address the present and future challenges third is closely work with all the ddgs of icr to meet their requirements and fourth there are immense expectations from different ministries at national and state levels and many of the international organizations therefore i feel that niap should function differently and evolve its own management model i'm just suggesting few uh, broad areas for your consideration. 
consideration on this occasion. Perhaps you may be already practicing uh, those. Number one, uh, it is time to work in a multidisciplinary mode. Uh, you already mentioned, Dr. Suresh, that you are working on a multidisciplinary mode. And it is time to build a strong partnership and networking, not only at national level, but also at international level. We need to leverage the strength of our partners. Their knowledge and capabilities will help us in elevating our understanding and skills. It is being said, if we have to make progress, we have to learn from those who perform better than us. Second, acquire leadership in priority areas. Each staff of NIAP, I feel, must strive for excellence and provide leadership in key areas. Excellence can be acquired by updating capacity and skills. We need to aim high and think big. We should also seek frank feedback on our shortcomings. The staff needs to think and do differently. Business as usual will not work. They should be proactive and ahead of others with respect to providing solutions, applying new tools, and publishing in high impact sector journals. The staff should build their reputation with their achievements rather than their positions. In science, hierarchies based on positions have no meaning. We should respect hierarchy of knowledge and contribution. Third, it is time of 2020 kind of matches, then five days of test matches. So is the research in social sciences. We need to forget the days of developing projects of three, five years and devoting one full year for data collection. In present times, our recognition depends on how fast we can develop new ideas, implement them, and provide uh, solutions. Fourth, to leapfrog from present to higher frontiers, research programs of the Institute should be of high standards and respond to emerging challenges. In today's context, everyone would like to look forward, not backward. But most of the social sciences show what has been, what has happened in the past. Today, everyone knows what has happened in the past. So futuristic research is preferred over the historical research. These will require more advanced econometric tools and modeling kind of work. Finally, I propose you can have some sort of flagship publication or some flagship event on an annual basis. Flagship uh, publication and events will further elevate the image of NIA. Friends, uh, with these few words, I once again congratulate NIAP staff for the annual day celebration and organizing Dr. Jha Memorial Lecture. And many thanks for giving me a wonderful opportunity to share my thought on this occasion. And I wish NIAP and its staff great success in years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your motivation, guidance, and blessings. We always look forward to your uh, guidance for reshaping our research agenda and uh, uh, reorienting it. Ladies and gentlemen, NIAP has instituted the fun Foundation Day Awards from this year. Now I request Director NIAP to provide the brief background of these awards. Uh, first of all, let me uh, welcome other colleagues who have joined, Dr. Sasang Bide, Dr. Rashid, uh, from IFRI, Dr. Padi, Dr. Chandra Ranade, and some more. Welcome, thank you uh, for joining this program. Uh, as uh, I mentioned that we introduced this Foundation Day Award to recognize the contribution of all those who have contributed, uh, contributed to the growth of this institute. The basic idea is that we have to provide some incentive, some recognition to the colleagues who have been doing really good work. So it is the contribution to research, the quality of publication that is given the uh, main uh, consideration, main emphasis. And this time, in fact, we advertised this during the lockdown period, but still we could get uh, some applications. A committee was constituted very of senior people and they have unanimously recommended the uh, name of uh, Dr. Salender Kumar. So he'll be getting the first Foundation Day Award. He has, uh, he has a PhD from NDRI 
and mostly work in ICR, three different institute related to dry land agriculture, Goat Institute, Krida, and now Kazri, I think he's there, and Ikrisat also dry land agriculture. We looked at the, his main uh, publications. He has published in all the important journals, multidisciplinary, as well as of economics. And I was looking at it, his publication are in 18 different journals, 18 different journals and total uh, research journal articles, they are 54, which is quite high by our standards. He has published in the economics journals. He has published in land use policy. He has published in agriculture water management. He has published in agriculture systems. He has published in ecological indicators. He has published in current science. He has published in land degradation and development. So in terms of uh, his work, I think there are significant contribution he has made. And in recognition of these contributions, the committee has recommended uh, uh, this uh, award to him. So before the award is presented, I request uh, Dr. Raka to read the citation, please. Dr. Shalinder Kumar has been awarded the Foundation Day Award 2020 for his significant contributions in the field of agricultural economics and policy research. His accomplishments include analysis of farming and livelihood systems, ex ante impact assessment and prioritization, asset-based farm typologies, value chain research, systems modeling for climate change, impact and adaptation, and designing climate resilient agricultural systems. He also contributed to the creation of innovation platform for exploring remunerative markets for resource poor farmers, sustainable driving systems, and institutional innovations for promoting sustainable agricultural intensification. His contributions have been widely used by policymakers and planners in India for development of dryland farming. May I now request our Honorable Director General, Dr. Tilochan Mahapatraji, to present the Foundation Day Award to Dr. Shalender Kumar. Little, little up. Yeah, ha, huh, Dr. Sandhu. Congratulations. Congratulations. Great. Yeah. Thank you. The award consists a medal, a certificate, and a shawl. So, which will be presented when you come here, but virtually, uh, Honorable DG has presented this award. Congratulations on behalf of the entire NIA family and Indian Congress. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May I now request Dr. Shalanda to say a few words? In fact, I, I came to know yesterday and I was really surprised to, to hear this news. And I'm really humbled and thankful that NIP has selected me for this honor. And this is special for me because in the beginning of my career for initially for 12 years, I really wanted to come to NIAP and NCAP to work as a scientist, but which could not happen. So, but uh, my, I think intensity was so much that now I'm connected to NIAP with this foundation, first foundation award. So thank you very much, Niap. And I express my gratitude and heartfelt thank to DG Saab for giving me giving away this honor to me. And it's a great feeling that uh, I have received two recognitions this year from DG Saab. So a few months back, uh, NAS Fellowship and then this Foundation Award. So I'm really happy about that. And it's a great honor to receive this award in the presence of most eminent people in the field and with who, who I keep them in great respect. All of them are here, so I'm really happy about that. Professor Uma Lele, who is a global leader in the subject, is here. And I have been interacting with her for the past three years, and she has been very encouraging. Uh, till So it's a very regular interaction I have with her. And I was lucky to get the guidance and support from all the eminent persons sitting here, most of them, in fact, in the last 25 years. Dr. Joshi has been my teacher at Karnal, and he continued that guidance throughout my career. And Professor Ramesh Chand and Dr. Mrityanjay also have been like my teachers. They did not directly ta taught me, but right from my PhD days, they have been guiding and encouraging me all through. Dr. Suresh Pal has been very supportive since the beginning of my career. My attachment was in IRI for nine months, and 
he was really supported we have also i have worked with him in some nip project and now also he promote lot of collaboration where i am part of part of that those project so my association with ncap and niap has been very long and strong and since the time of dr dayana jha i was a regular visitor and collaborating with ncap scientists wherever i worked maybe some people used to think that i am part of ncap at that time and uh, i have worked in number of institutes as dr sreshpal mentioned the goat institute creda kajri and ikrisat and my work mostly with the multidisciplinary teams on research for development projects and and i have directly worked with hundreds of thousands of i can say more than lakh of farmers directly and uh, for the outcome oriented project and uh, nikra especially gave me opportunity to work throughout the country but most of my project were almost 5 uh, to 6 states and uh, my focus uh, the during the past uh, more than one decade the focus has been on the analysis tools and strategies for sustainable natural resource management including water management integrated farming systems climate change impacts and approaches and investment strategies and policies for climate resilient agriculture the current thrust of my work is on climate smart and nutrition oriented value chains and agri food systems and also on decision support system for co designing climate resilient farming systems i again thank uh, dg saf and all the uh, distinguished people here and uh, in yap thank you very much thank you everyone thank you so much thank you so much sir ladies and gentlemen we have uh, dr mitunjaya with us this evening sir always has deep concerns for this institution as well as individuals whenever we have any problem he always calls us he always guides us so he always he is always concerned with all of us sir may i now request you to please bless the members of nia nia family and introduce the speaker for today dr umal elke uh thanks to the ncap niip now niip niap niap honorable uh, dr ramesh jain dr tilochan mahapatra dr umalele dr joshi dr agarwal uh, uh, dear dr suresh pal and dr suresh babu uh, dr ak singh uh, uh, distinguished guests a family of uh, dr jha colleagues and friends since considering uh, as as a member of uh, icr niap family i am also privileged to welcome all of you to the 29th annual day function of uh, niap this year function is uh, somewhat special because of the august presence of uh, our global family member i consider still i mean as our uh, member of the fraternity dr uma lele the most distinguished agricultural and rural development scholar and thinker of our time i would congratulate heartily the niap staff for their excellent contributions during 2020 uh, and uh, uh, i also congratulate to dr shalender kumar for the uh, first uh, foundation award he well deserved and it is good that he got it and then he formally in my in my opinion joins nia family which was his ambition right from his uh, almost uh, scientist days so therefore congratulations to you and then it gives lot of responsibility to carry forward uh, your uh, stint of contributions to higher level so that you know you would assume different uh, positions and uh, heights now <clears throat> uh uh it at uh, it is a, it is a, a, a kind of a madam i a madam lele the annual day function i nostalgically remember is an occasion to celebrate together the achievements in office and developments in our families the nip families during the year with friends and well wishers and seek their suggestions advice and blessings for doing still better next year i think dr joshi has been kind enough to provide very uh, good thoughts on how 
we can improve our performance for the coming years. Uh, so, uh, I would uh, try to tell about the journey that NIAP has uh, made, uh, you know, in, in its journey of past 29 years, NIAP has crossed many significant milestones, creating and spreading impact all the time. Notable among them include growth from a small national research center, a small think tank with only seven scientists you know, in 1991, to a full-fledged institute of 26 scientists, which I see in their annual report, a budgetary growth of rupees 10 lakh in 1991 to rupees 11 crore this, this you know, 2020, have its own building, infrastructure, state-of-the-art facilities, recognized as an ISO 9001-2015 institution, attained a brand name in agricultural economics, training, policy research, communication, and advice in India and also the globe, an ability to successfully bid to host International Conference of Agricultural Economists 2021, together with friends, of course, but you know, being in the lead to do this. So during its 30 years of uh, you know, 2021, when it hosts, you know, in terms of with the support of ICR, of course, which need to be recognized all the time, I think it is a great feat that NA, in NIAP has uh, traveled. All these became possible by in-house talent, merit, commitment, leadership, and contributions, ably supported by patronage, liberal support from ICR, Government of India, the presence of uh, DG now itself is an indication of how his uh, predecessors have ably supported NIAP from the bottom of the heart, other than also from you know, all angles. All these are uh, possible on account of these uh, you know, features. So, uh, and a yeah, very valuable suggestions, advice and blessings from friends and well-wishers. I think we have an army of well-wishers across the globe. I think anybody who, thinks of agricultural economics, always thinks of NIA first and then other institutions now. But we are well aware that the best is yet to come. And we assure you, because I'm still considering as a family member of NIA, I am also included in this kind of an assurance to you that our dedicated work and commitment, we seek your suggestions, good wishes and blessings for the best year to come immediately as, as soon as possible. Now, uh, I have the honor to briefly introduce Dr. Muma Lele to the audience before she delivers 13th Professor Dayanath Ja Memorial Lecture. Dr. Uma Lele is a distinguished scholar of global development policy, public policy, and partnerships and agriculture and rural development. She has several notable distinctions to her credit, some of which include she is the first woman with a PhD in applied you know, economics from Cornell University, first woman president elect of International Association of Agricultural Economists, a record in 91 years of its history she is now deeply involved in planning the mega event, International Conference of Agricultural Economists 2021, and assume presidency in August 2021 in New Delhi. It is a happy coincidence, Madam, that she is assuming presidency in the country of her birth on or on or, or on her 80th year of birth and the month of birth. That is a coincidence that I happily you know, congratulate you for all this. You know, and then it proves that, that age is not a barrier for continued professional contributions you know, in, in, the, in the field. I think this is a 
very good inspiring example to all of us to move forward in contributing to the discipline and, and development. Now, from a base at the World Bank, as well as US universities and international organizations, she has extensively contributed on food, nutrition, agriculture and rural development, environment, health, science and technology, aid and finance, operations, evaluation in Asia, Africa, Latin America in particular, with more than 18 books, book length publications, international and national reports, well over 130 book chapters, papers, articles, and other publications. She is a distinguished fellow of the several academies like our own National Academy of Agricultural Sciences, American Agricultural Economics Association, alumnus of Cornell University, and bestowed with a Lifetime Achievement Award of Indian Society of Economics, Dr. P. P. Paul Award of NAS, MS Swaminathan Award from TOS, uh, Clifton Wharton Award, Honorary Fellow of African Association of Agricultural Economists, Honorary Doctorate in Agricultural Sciences at uh, Stellenbosch University of South Africa, and several others which for want of time, I'm not in a position to read about. To build generations of scholars in agricultural uh, and rural development, she has established a mentorship program for students of developing countries, including now India, it is, has been extended in some years ago. Instituted Best Research Award on Gender and also launched a Committee on Women in Agricultural Economics at um, in International Agricultural Economics Association for better opportunities and professional advancement of women agricultural economists. So her sir, breadth and depth of her uh, you know, vision to support the discipline and then uh, see that the, the, the next generations would come like her to, uh, to take the flag forward. I think this is all an indication which I have read you know, as, as, a, as an example. On, in, in brief, she is a legendary icon, a role model for academic excellence, and we are proud of you, Madam. We wish you many more achievements, laurels, and above all, a very happy and healthy life forward. Thank you, Madam. Thank you all. Now, I, I feel that it is your time to address uh, the August audience and we would be pleased to listen to you about your wise words. Thanks a lot to all of you. And I again thanks, and I again uh, welcome all of you to this August function of NIEP. Thanks a lot. The floor is yours, Dr. Umalele. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm dealing with technology. Can uh, yeah. you see the screen now? Okay, yeah, it has come. It has Thank come. you very much. What? And you can hear me, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. What an honor it is to, to speak here, but I didn't know that, that I was going to meet all these years ago. Um, and I wasn't really prepared for, for this uh, presentation. I feel uh, a sense of awe and also intimidation, if I can put it that way, because there are so many people who know so much about India that I don't know anymore. I'm too far away from India, but I'm going to try and do my best, and I hope I don't disappoint Queen. In fact, after uh, Dr. Mutunja's introduction, uh, let's stop here because I didn't want to disappoint you by after all these accolades to make sure that the presentation isn't good enough to meet the praise that has been given to me. So thank you very much, uh, Suresh Pal and Dr. Agarwal, P.K. Zoshi, who I interact with, Dr. Mahapatra, who's taken the time to come to attend this uh, Dr. Ramesh Chand, 
um, Dr. Mutunjay, and so on and so forth. All of them, I'm grateful to you for coming to this presentation. Uh, I'm hoping that I can be a little more, little provocative so that you have some things to think about, about smallholder agriculture, productivity growth, and increasingly the demand for a sustainable, healthy food consumption. I've known uh, Dr. Jha, I had known him for many years and I never really expected that one of these days I'd have to speak about him. He made so many contributions to uh, agricultural economics. He was a forebearer of many, uh, many kinds of research that is going on today and I've listed a number of things he's done, particularly he's gone to investment in R&D where he was at the forefront of looking at India's R&D expenditures, uh, looking at the returns to agriculture, he, uh, agricultural research. He also spent a number of years at IFPRI and that's where I got to know him better. He did some research on uh, African agricultural research when I was directing a major study in India. And I learned a lot from him. I put this in honor of uh, Dr. Jha. I think his first uh, presentation an empirical study of India's agricultural research, uh, which was published posthumously after he passed away, said a lot of important things about Indian agricultural research development, uh, which are still a guide for us to see uh, whether we are on track uh, on where we are going. For instance, decline in funding to sh uh, share of R&D in, uh, in agricultural GDP, aging uh, scientific staff, uh, research allocations among crops, and the role of private sector. So all of these uh, issues are very relevant today, and I'll be speaking about some of them uh, in my presentation. These issues have become even more relevant because as you know, the UN Secretary General has planned a uh, 2021 summit on sustainable food system in a context where global GDP has declined substantially. There are growing inequalities. Many countries are off track on SDG2. Um, there is a triple crisis of you know, 100 to 150 million poor people uh, increasing in number as a result of COVID. And so this time we have a combination of financial crisis, health crisis, climate crisis, um, leading to many challenges, but also many opportunities. Um, and I, one of the questions is, how do we deal with these opportunities in a context where digital divide has increased, but opportunities to use uh, digital tools has also increased as we can see from these um, interactions through Zoom. Uh, there is a race for vaccine and India is very much at the forefront of producing these vaccines on a mass scale. And in so what India needs obviously is much greater attention to health, which we haven't paid as much attention to and especially the interaction between health and nutrition indicators, particularly focus on focusing on poor girls and women who constitute a major part of the laboring class. So looking at India's R&D uh, from the point of view of big countries, it's interesting that Pardi and Alston and Pardi have recently come up with a new publication on returns to education, uh, returns to R&D. And uh, they have talked about China, Brazil, and India as now being significant uh, financiers of R&D investments. 
compared even to developing developed countries because the share of developed countries in total investments has declined and share of china brazil and india has increased a lot now if we look at china and brazil uh, compared to india which is very important to do in this context of the challenges that india is facing uh, brazil's uh, share of rnd expense Expenditures has always been more than one percent of GDP, and at times it's more than two percent. And I was looking at where did this line of one to two percent came, but Brazil has always um, exceeded it with much higher expenditures on R&D, and it shows in its productivity growth. China and India, as you can see, the the green line and the blue line. are china and india and africa which was ahead of india in terms of share of uh, gdp being spent on agricultural research its uh, trend has been declining and china and india were kind of growing together in fact india was ahead of china uh, for a long time until about 2.5 and 2. Uh, sorry 2005 2006 and you can see that china basically broke away from india with substantial increase in expenditures in r&d in the public sector so the share of agricultural research expenditures a share of gdp in china really shot up after 2006 and the gap between india and china has increased a increased a lot and there has also been tremendous amount of growth in private sector r&d uh, particularly in middle income countries and i think these countries like china india and brazil again are considered to be now india is considered to be a low middle income country and their share in private research has increased a lot but china is again way ahead of india uh, in terms of expenditures not just in public sector but private sector expenditures why as much as that of public sector expenditures in china and these are old numbers but uh, about 9.4 billion dollars of expenditures in china in uh, private sector research and one of the things that the chinese have done is not only that they have a very thriving private sector research which is interesting because most of us think about it as a um, public sector run country a uh, lot of its own private sector research but it's also acquired uh, international companies like syngenta which has added substantially to its private sector research but it also investing a lot in private sector research i couldn't get really good reliable numbers for recent years but i have no question that brazil is very active in private sector research and much to my pleasant surprise prey and nagarjun who done lot of work on investment in private sector research have had a lot of good things to say about the growth of private sector research in india although it's nowhere comparable to that in china and i think one of the issues that we should be looking at in the future is not just public se- sector research but private sector research and the synergy between public and private sector and i found it interesting in reading their papers that they were saying that multinational companies are doing more research in india private sector research than in china because they are afraid of the losing intellectual property in china whereas in india they feel that if they produce new technology it's not being acquired in a way which is not desirable so that's a good thing speaking about private sector and there are a lot of examples of synergy between public and private sector research in india bt cotton is by far the best example but also hybrid maize and others so i hope that we in the future we will be looking at uh, both public and private sector research so what prompts uh, growth in private sector research in r and d and uh, play and 
others uh, point out that the sheer size of countries like China, India, and Brazil are big assets, and we should think of them as assets with large markets where there is greater enthusiasm about investing in them than in countries which, which have small markets. The cost of developing technology is much uh, lower, and also I see I, IPR rates have increased, improved in all these countries, and that has encouraged private sector to invest more. Uh, the policies towards FDI are extremely important in encouraging private sector to invest. And again, China is way ahead of India on FDI investments in private sector. And all of this is a result of the fact that demand is, has been increased uh, both in domestic markets and in export markets. And India has become a major exporter of agricultural machinery, for instance. And so it's not just uh, crop exports, but also exports in seed, fertilizer machinery, et cetera which is causing private sector to invest a lot more in R&D. And we should think of public and private sector as partnerships. Now, what is the consequence of the fact that China and Brazil are way ahead of India on uh, research? One of the ways in which it shows up is research publications. And I agree that NIAP and others uh, people like Shalinder have contributed a lot to publications, but look at the difference between publications between China and India. And if you see, it all started from 2005-06 when China broke up from India and expanded its uh, investments. And I think there is a lesson there for India. Look at the flat, reasonably flat line on India compared to China and Brazil. And the other big difference, of course, is in productivity. And this is one major of TFP growth, which many of you have seen from Hooghly's work. And you can see that China's TFP growth has been substantially higher than India's. And it is a return to investment in agricultural research. Uh, the Publishing and Party recently come to the conclusion that the benefit cost ratio of investing in research is about 10 to one. Uh, they've turned large number of figures and they've concluded that returns to investment in research are very, very high. So I hope that we also, I also carry a message to ICAR and to NIAP that we just need to invest a lot more in research going to get the kind of productivity growth uh, in various areas and where you can see China and India that the, the major ex expander of um, uh, agricultural production growth. Now when it comes to the another major of productivity growth is the number of undernourished. And again, uh, we are behind on uh, the number of people that are still undernourished in India. These are numbers which FAO had changed recently from 2018 to 2020. But the big decline uh, from, to, from 821 to 600 and something is mainly because China has virtually wiped out uh, undernourishment. So it's no more a part of the number of people undernourished. And that is a result of productivity growth. And again, there is a lot India needs to do, both in terms of poverty and hunger. So I actually did want to speak about the rainbow uh, revolution in India, because there is a lot going on on a variety of fronts in India, which I couldn't capture in this short presentation, but much is happening on dairy, on fisheries, horticulture, livestock, poultry. Uh, but when I look at the details of all of those, because India has had a very admirable dairy industry, for instance, 
therapist and thanks to Dr. Kulian. Uh, we find that in each of those areas, there is scope for more investment in policies, institutions, infrastructure, food safety standards, uh, both to increase access of poor people to diverse foods, as well as uh, to make sure that we are exporting a lot more because it's heartening to know that India's horticultural production has increased a lot and it's now larger than uh, food grain production. And so if we look at where is horticultural production coming from, it's from all states in India. And if that is going to be available to the domestic population as well as for exports, then we really need highly integrated markets. And that is where there is great deal of scope for more investment in infrastructure, in institutions and food safety laws and their implementation so that India can become not just the large, second largest producer of horticultural crops, which it is, but also one of the major exporters uh, and also one of the sources of food consumption in a context of dietary transition in India, which needs to take place very badly. So now I'm going to do a few comparisons of China and India because uh, I have been studying China for a long time. And I think what I realized is that on the whole, the Chinese have invested a lot more in their agriculture and rural development than India has when it comes to infrastructure, education, health, with huge payoffs. And I can't really say that the Chinese agriculture has been much more efficient. If you look at the amount of resources that they have spent, look at the gross fixed capital formation in China compared to India and the growth over time from 1990 particularly. Um, the disparity between the two countries has increased a lot. Similarly, China has been much more welcoming to foreign direct investment than India. And again, we have to look at the uh, environment for foreign direct investment to see how India can catch up with this. Another important thing that I wanted to bring to your attention, which I think doesn't get as much discussion in India as it should, and this is an OEC study which in which um, uh, Ashok Gulati played a major role in showing that India has been taxing, effectively taxing its agriculture for a long time. And these numbers are from 2000 to 2000. 2016, and it's an OECD publication. And it turns out that if you compare India's um, effective uh, support or lack thereof uh, compared to other countries, India is one of the few countries, few significant agricultural countries that has been effectively taxing its agriculture, even when you take into account uh, all the subsidies given to power and fertilizer, etc. So these are the net amount of taxation of agriculture. And of course, rice and wheat play an important role in it. Now, the big difference again between China and India is that China's support for agriculture increased so rapidly from about 2000 that now the support added up to more than support of all OECD countries put together. Now, I'm not suggesting that India should go to that extent in supporting its agriculture, but there is no question that, that India has not supported its agriculture through pricing. And I want to make a distinction between uh, support by better prices as distinct from better subsidies to inputs, because subsidies don't add up in net terms to agriculture and um, to be positive, and they distort markets. So um, I think there is scope for improving um, India's price policies. And so uh, Ashok Gulati, uh, Ramesh Chan, they have all been writing about price support programs, etc. There is no question that India's two um, objectives was stabilizing 
food prices and other of acquiring stocks for PDS. India has done very well in stabilizing food prices. It's also acquired stocks for PDS, sometimes a lot more than it needed to meet its PDS requirements. But there have been many consequences of that policy. One is the Im implicit taxation has led to greater demand from farmers, farmers for subsidies, as you can see in power, water, fertilizers, etc. In 2016, according to Gulati's report, 29 billion were spent on subsidies, but they could be spent on investment in infrastructure, markets work better to invest in uh, farmers' organizations, etc. Uh, also, sudden imposition of export bans has led to certain kind of uncertainty in the market. Ex ex excess stocks in India, we all know, have been very costly in terms of their fiscal uh, costs and also in terms of amount of resources that are available to invest in other things. So in other words, stabilizing prices in India to, to an extreme. I think the measures that it has used has probably cost more than it should. And I think our colleague, Madhur Gautam, whose father used to work for ICAR and now is economist at the World Bank, they have published a report which says that it's possible for India to do price stabilization uh, at a lower cost than it is doing currently. And would mean is greater role for the private sector to store a um, little more flexible policy on pricing than is the case currently, allowing little more transmission of world prices to domestic prices, etc. And I will speak about the new reforms in India, but and I can see that there is a concern on the part of farmers in Punjab and Haryana that maybe they will lose price support. Uh, but actually the issues that need to be discussed more actively in India is not just the market reforms, which it has done. And I think in my view, India is on the right path in addressing those questions, but also in terms of the price policy it has followed for nearly 40 years that I'm aware of since the Green Revolution. So India has been trapped into this uh, stockpiling approach and that has meant that the domestic cost of that policy has been significant without necessarily more investment in, in agriculture. So where is that investment going in China, for instance? Uh, I, I know some of these numbers on the number of scientists in China compared to Brazil and India, but the, and say that maybe some of these are not scientists, they are um, extension workers or they're retired people, et cetera. But the gap shows that the, the numbers are enormously larger in China. Chinese agriculture is much more service intensive than Indian agriculture. And it's ironic in a country where we have labor surplus that we are not using our people as much to increase productivity. And if you look at researchers uh, per million farmers, and of course, Brazil is way ahead of India. Uh, similarly, big uh, gaps between China and India. If we look at investments in water, uh, similarly, big gaps. India has been investing uh, in water, but not to an, to the same extent. And there are a number of issues with regard to water management. I don't have much time to talk about. So um, then what is that after um, Suresh, I'm uh, oh, sorry, uh, Dr. Jha's study, Suresh Pal published a, a major report on R&D in India. And it was, <laughs> I think, very gently put, if I can put it, Suresh, your recommendations or findings. But it said that the IPR regiment is very important. It needs to be paid attention to mobilize more operational funds for research, not just for staff 
nice infrastructure, etc. I can't uh, read all this because I'm also hearing an echo in my presentation. Are you hearing an echo that I am? Uh, but I think. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of background talk, I'm afraid. So I hope that. I no, hope no. that that is turned off. If you can mute some. Yeah, Mrs. Jha has joined just now, so there was some problem. So we oh, are. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Yes. So, um, I think uh, Suresh Pal's report made a recommendation. Time to go into, but I hope that they are being paid attention to. And I hope that there is a um, more debate in India about the whole issue of innovation systems, the role of digital agriculture, digital policies in India now. And basically, I think it leads to a conclusion that there is scope for consolidation merger of existing institutions rather than multiplication of them, further multiplication. Um, making sort of a moratorium on new institutions and building the ones that we have, like NIAP, much more effective, improving the uh, the ratio of operation costs to fixed costs, etc. And so now I come to the recent reforms that have been done in India. As some of you know, my first research in India was on grain markets in the 1960s. And I had looked at APMC as a very uh, new progressive legislation in India, which was intended to protect farmers. And uh, I said some things about how markets were working in India, which was a long time ago now, 40 years ago. And so when I saw these the new reforms, my first reaction was, well, there was a lot of consensus among economists that these reforms were long overdue and they needed to be done. I think Sudha Narayan has written a very good paper on uh, these reforms and outlined the pros and cons of them. So I'm not going to go into them. I learned a lot by reading her paper, but in general, I was a little surprised by the extent of resistance to these reforms. And I think for some good reasons that I have pointed out. Farmers in Punjab are, and Haryana are concerned that they will lose MSP, uh, that the food transfers will be uh, replaced by cash transfers. Uh, there'll be loss of commissions to Adityas and that will mean um, unemployment or loss of income. Market fees in those states will be reduced, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so there are a number of issues there are also a lot of issues on contract farming. Again, I think contract farming has expanded rapidly in China and other countries. And there are a lot of intricate issues related to contract farming, which I hope there will be a lot more research on in India than seems to be the case currently. And then the Essential Commodities Act, which I think is relatively non-controversial. Uh, but so what does it all mean? I would not say that these reforms are not justified. I think some people have criticized them for saying that they are reforms without a long vision for India's agriculture. And I think that the vision in a way implicitly that I have been outlining is the one which entails lot more investment in Indian agriculture and rural development than is currently the case, uh, that it leads to much more emphasis on institutions than is the case. For instance, farmers and producers organizations need to expand much more rapidly uh, than in India than has happened, it seems. Uh, women's self-help groups are a very positive development over the last 20, 30 years, and they are doing wonderful work, so I hope they will be supported. But there is no question that there is 
scope for tenure reform, there is scope for in, increased investment in physical and infrastructure, uh, uh, electronic infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also better data and on markets and prices because we will need to know how these reforms are progressing and what their implications are. So I think I will end here. Um, I learned a lot by doing this. I want to thank a lot of my colleagues in um, like Carl Prey and uh, Nagarjan. They sent me their papers almost immediately after I requested them. A lot of Chinese colleagues sent me their papers. Uh, uh, I was bugging people like Shalinder all the time. Uh, and so I'm grateful for all their support without which I wouldn't have been able to do this presentation. I learned a lot and I hope it's of use to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your valuable thoughts on smallholder agriculture, productivity growth, and sustainable food consumption. You have integrated various dimensions related to the production, growth, investment, trade, consumption, dietary diversification, and institutional innovations to into the development path of agricultural sector. The global comparisons will be very useful as learning lessons. You also touched upon the recent reforms and highlighted critical issues. Ma'am, your lecture has highlighted many important researchable issues and strategies which will go a long way in shaping our research agenda and the future of Indian agriculture. Thank you so much once again, ma'am, for being with us this evening. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, NIAP has recently come out with three important policy papers, which are outcomes of important uh, externally funded research projects and studies. Uh, may I request Rajini, ma'am, to uh, please share the slide? These three publications relate to impact of climate change on agriculture in India, assessment for agroclimatic zones by Dr. Naveen P. Singh and his team. Second publication on potential adoption and impact of micro in Indian agriculture, Dr. Subhash Chan uh, and team. And uh, policy paper on trade and investment policy for overseas acquisition of fertilizer and raw material, Subhash SP and team. These three publications were outcome of externally funded projects from NICRA, Niti Aayog, and Department of Fertilizers India. We request Professor Ramesh Chand to kindly release uh, these publications. Sir. So Raka, I'm sorry, I physically can't touch these important uh, publication, but to... Yes. Uh, express my feeling that uh, I feel very, very happy to uh, release uh, these uh, important uh, three publications. And I look forward to reading those. I hope I deserve one copy of uh, each of those for releasing those at least. <laughs> and yes. you will send one set to me. So yes. congratulate the author of uh, all the three papers for uh, choice of the topic and uh, for seemingly uh, rich uh, content uh, in these uh, policy papers. Thank you so much, you. sir. We, we shall definitely send the copies of these publications to your office. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has now come to get blessings and guidance from our Director General, Dr. Tidrochan Mahapatra ji. Sir, may I request you to please bless the gathering. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Dr. Ramesh Chan, the uh, Chair of the uh, and all the program, uh, Dr. Uma Lili, uh, President-elect of the International Association of Agricultural Economists, and uh, also, very importantly, uh, the uh, today's uh, memorial lecture being delivered by uh, you, Dr. Dayanath is a matter of great privilege for us 
and a great opportunity for us to learn from uh, your vast experience and then uh, reach the reporter of knowledge that you have, uh, particularly in the global arena, uh, whatever uh, you have gathered over long years of your acting and working uh, you know, in many different capacities. So it's a great opportunity to listen to you. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mrtunjay, Dr. Uh, Joshi, uh, Dr. Uh, Agarwal, my colleague, we will be extend education. Uh, uh, also, uh, I learned that uh, 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 Madam Jha uh, has joined, so uh, uh, Honorable Madam Jha, uh, Diana Jha. Uh, uh, other colleagues, uh, Dr. Reke Singh, Dr. Hawk, and uh, many others, uh, Suresh Babu, and uh, many others who have joined in today's program. Uh, colleagues from the Institute, uh, heartiest congratulations, uh, Dr. Suresh Pal, on this day. Uh, that is your annual day uh, that is being celebrated today. Uh, many things have been spoken about your own achievement, uh, how Institute has grown and uh, who all have contributed. And very uh, specifically, the past directors, uh, Dr. Mutunjay, Dr. Joshi, Dr. Ramesh Chand, uh, being uh, present and uh, linked today to this program uh, digitally. So uh, thanks profusely to all of you for building this institution and contributing to, uh, you know, uh, bringing this institution to this stage of uh, 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 getting recognition uh, uh, nationally as well as globally as a think tank. Uh, Today is the occasion not only to congratulate Dr. Suresh Pal, but also congratulate uh, Dr. Uh, Salander uh, Kumar uh, uh, for uh, uh, the kind of recognition uh, he has received today, the award he has received today, the first Foundation Day Award. Uh, Dr. Kumar, hearty congratulations to you. And uh, you are the first one, and certainly uh, you will be remembered for a long time and you will be counted always. The past ones are always counted. And uh, also, heartiest congratulations to uh, 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 Professor Uma Lili. Actually, uh, this is a small token uh, of, uh, 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 you know, uh, recognition of your vast experience and contribution. And uh, it's a small thing for you, but for us, uh, you being uh, present today and delivering uh, Dr. Dayanath Sa Memorial Lecture it is a big event for us and we take pride in you and uh, we always speak about you and your experience and achievement and contributions. So we all uh, are, uh, uh, you know, greatly uh, honored uh, by your presence uh, for kindly agreeing to deliver this Memorial Lecture and also uh, delivering a wonderful lecture uh, uh, very, very informative, and that, uh, at least for me, a, a, a non-economist uh, who has no, absolutely no knowledge about uh, the economics, uh, you know, understanding, uh, you know, or taking note of all that you said, uh, you know, uh, that's a great learning experience for me. Uh, I believe that other colleagues must have benefited uh, from what you said, and uh, I don't have to really give details, Professor Ramesh Chan being the economist and also uh, handling the uh, affairs of reforms and all that uh, uh, in Niti Aayog, uh, and then you know uh, contributing to all those reforms very significantly and driving uh, you know all those uh, would be certainly uh, speaking more about it but uh, certainly the kind of ideas you have given to us we would be uh, very happy to interact with you further uh, you know, uh, to see how we can really uh, do it. For instance, you say that, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, some of those investment, for instance, you know, the difference in uh, between China and India often we describe and you have so nicely uh, uh, brought out those differences in terms of uh, whatever, anything I talk about. So, uh, uh, so that's a uh, kind of eye opener. Uh, so how do we really uh, have a level playing field? 
how do we really compare uh, if the investment itself is so hugely different the rest of the comparisons uh, you know don't really work uh, because obviously they will be different so so first point is that are we reforming enough uh, you know in this sector and are we uh, ready to bring in that kind of investment uh, to bring the change and bring a difference and make a difference uh, nationally and globally in terms of publications in terms of uh, you know uh, factor productivity or in terms of export and all that that we talk about but that's not really all uh, investment alone would not be really uh, making all the difference uh, we have to have structural changes very strategically done and uh, also uh, bringing uh, you know human resource component into it uh, you know uh, 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 by way of developing them the critical mass uh, being there as you said rightly you know uh, the the intensity of uh, researchers uh, you know uh, and so on and so forth so a whole lot of things to do uh, you know for india unless we actually embrace those uh, reforms and bring in more investment uh, probably you know uh, we can't uh, you know, uh, at any point in time, uh, comparable to uh, China. Uh, and uh, Brazil also, you know, uh, is galloping uh, in many aspects of uh, agriculture, investment, development, uh, you know, all that. Uh, and you have brought out those so clearly. Uh, so uh, return to investment is quite high. And in India, if we study and all that in, across the world, uh, that indicates, in, in fact, poverty alleviation uh, and so on and so forth are so significantly done uh, through investment in uh, uh, agricultural R&D. Uh, you know, that we have been trying to communicate, but, uh, you know, probably a person like you, uh, you know, uh, and then through you, uh, you know, other uh, organizations, maybe APO, and those communications, and perhaps a Ramesh Chan being there, we should be in the coming uh, five years, we should be having, we should expect a very vast difference uh, and then significant investment change uh, in this. Uh, what you said, the rainbow revolution and the field <coughs> of uh, development which had happened, more than you know, 6% or 10% growth in some of these sectors, I'll not go into those details, is a very, very uh, encouraging ones, uh, but certainly there are gaps and as you said, that uh, you know uh, the kind of investment we have promised, the kind of actual investment happening, and uh, there are a lot more to actually. Uh, Professor Ramesh Chand knows, and uh, he would be probably uh, throwing more light on today's. And uh, uh, the kind of uh, institutional, uh, you know, merger and uh, kind of suggestions you have given at the end, and I think uh, we would be, uh, we are already working on those. And uh, you know, uh, with regard to the Indian Council of Agriculture Research, and uh, we would certainly uh, work uh, further. Uh, uh, the reforms uh, which has uh, which have been there, which have come, uh, you know, uh, are uh, really uh, wonderful at this point in time. As you rightly said, all the economists, uh, were, you know, for the, for quite some time, uh, were suggesting this, and they are all supporting this. And in fact, uh, they are also writing for uh, in support of this. Uh, but uh, you know, politics, uh, you know, is a different uh, ball game, and it has different connotations and uh, regional, uh, and uh, you know, all that comes in. Uh, so, uh, so quite a bit of complexities exist, uh, and that is how you know I, 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 uh, this uh, gets uh, complicated in this country. Uh, but then uh, expansion with regard to digital uh, infrastructure and uh, digitalization of agriculture and uh, you know even even research uh, you know or getting uh, support of these platforms i think this is one area which you have suggested and uh, we would like to uh, go full swing uh, to embrace this and implement this in the coming uh, five years and provided we get uh, the support uh, Professor Ramesh Chand is here. I request to you uh, uh, that uh, we get this support. He's there in Finance Commission. Of course, Finance Commission don't uh, doesn't really deal with uh, only talks about states. But uh, you know, uh, he's uh, there in the PIF, so probably I uh, will be able to really get that kind of support uh, to to really uh, invigorate uh, the uh, the research system in this country. 
so that we contribute immensely uh, to uh, the development, poverty alleviation, uh, better nutrition outcomes, uh, and then uh, contribute significantly to uh, the five trillion uh, US dollar economy uh, that is uh, you know, projected uh, for this country. So at the end, uh, I must congratulate uh, Dr. Uh, Lele, madam, uh, for a wonderful lecture uh, from which I have learned plenty uh, and so many lessons to take home and uh, implement for me at the council level. So thank you very much profusely uh, for uh, agreeing to this, uh, you know, like delivering this lecture and also delivering this today and being present with us today. So thanks to Professor Ramesh Chan. So I have taken, uh, you know, a bit uh, uh, five, six, maybe seven minutes. So thank you very much. I stop here. So thanks to everybody. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to Dr. Suresh Pal for giving me this opportunity. Thank, thank you. you sir. Thank you so much, sir, for your blessings and motivation. We are grateful to you. And we always look forward to your guidance and support in future. Ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged to have Professor Ramesh Chand with us this evening. We know that most of his researches have been channelized into policy decisions and actions. He has been at the helm of affairs and has been instrumental in bringing recent agricultural policy reforms in the country. May I now request you, sir, for your address and blessings. Sir, please unmute yourself. Your mic is muted. Thank you, Dr. Gata. I congratulate uh, director and uh, entire staff of uh, NIAB uh, for uh, celebrating uh, Foundation Day of uh, NIAB. Uh, I think uh, though we couldn't uh, organize it on the proper day, but uh, maintaining tradition is much, much more important than sticking to a particular date. So uh, uh, Dr. Omar Lele, who is the chief guest of uh, today's uh, function, DG ICR, Dr. Trilochan uh, Mahapatraji, Mrs. Jab, DDGs, Dr. Suresh Pal, uh, other, my, my, uh, 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 teachers, in fact, Dr. Mutunja, Dr. Joshi, and uh, many other uh, distinguished participants in this uh, seminar, and uh, uh, my colleagues at, uh, uh, at uh, uh, NCAP. Uh, I really drive uh, a man's player to join uh, today's uh, function. I really feel uh, emotional also that uh, 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 I uh, that that we couldn't uh, uh, organize this function uh, physically and draw full uh, benefit of it. Uh, where our families also used to uh, meet and we used to share a lot of uh, interesting things and uh, prepare uh, ourselves for uh, the the next year and with a uh, more stronger resolve to improve our uh, contribution for uh, policy and uh, agriculture development in this uh, country. I, I also congratulate uh, this award I mentioned uh, one more award also. So really his war hard work of uh, last uh, 20 or uh, 25 years has started uh, paying off and I hope that uh, young scientists uh, act uh, inspired by uh, by the by the uh, recognition. I feel that uh, in uh, inviting Dr. Omar Lele, uh, NIAP has uh, made the best decision of the year. And, uh, For a couple of reasons, uh, one is that uh, our experience and, uh, and clothes association are only few of them uh, left. So, uh, Dr. Malalaji, being a former director of 
Hello. Hello. Are you able to hear me? It's audible, sir. Now. Suresh, you are coming, sir. Yes, it's audible, sir. Audible. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> so I was just uh, commenting on um, this uh, theme of the lecture and uh, uh, the the inference that uh, I uh, drew was. that uh, excellence come from continuity and commitment if you look at the uh, number of years which uma ji has just, uh, has just spent in comparing india with china with brazil and other important country brics countries and the uh, amount which he has spent on r and d issue technology issue really uh, like a, a meditation it require uh, a very very uh, strong uh, commitment and uh, we have seen that uh, in the results which she presented the material which she uh, shared uh, with us uh, also i feel that uh, china is a challenge for us and uh, uh, we have to uh, be shown in uh, poor light whenever any uh, comparison is uh, made but just for comfort of uh, dr mahapatra and comfort of many of us i sometimes used to tell people who compare productivity of india with china production of uh, different uh, agriculture crops with china so i used to tell them if the india's production of agriculture or india's performance in agriculture is say one fourth of that in china in other field in other area it is one tenth of what it is in china <laughs> so if you look at uh, it in uh, relative terms then you just find that uh, we seem to be doing uh, badly compared to china but when we compare what we are doing in agriculture compared to china and what we are doing in industry and other areas compared to china then you just find that uh, situation is not uh, not uh, uh, that bad in fact once i just uh, told one person that uh, you are talking of our productivity and production being one third or one fourth of china how many gold medal be brought from olympics and how many gold medal china brought from olympics <laughs> so china really uh, uh, a, a country which is uh, uh, i would say a great uh, challenge and also a great uh, goal post for india Uh, to uh, dream to uh, reach uh, to reach uh, there but at the same time um, um, uh, uh, there is no question answer session in this uh, lecture maybe i would uh, like to uh, know answer from uma ji later through uh, email i was wondering that despite so much production of different commodity despite so much of growth of food and agriculture in china why its import of food are increasing its population is almost static growth rate of agri food production sometimes they show 4% sometimes 6% and for last so many years already level of consumption reached a very high level so what is that reason that china had to uh, import a lot of food and two days back the report came that food prices in china are rising so much that they are finding it uh, uh, too so uh, uh, this is what i thought uh, i will just uh, share with the 
colleagues uh, uh, there that uh, that uh, that that there may be many other things uh, behind uh, uh, these comparisons uh, which only a researcher like a researcher at uh, nia can bring out that there are some contradiction which we see in china data and these are the reasons like someone told me that uh, soils in china particularly in some industrial area because of industrial effluent going uh, into rivers and going into land they they have so much of uh, industrial uh, uh, effluent that the food grown there can't be eaten particularly rice so from millions of the hectare whatever paddy or rice is produced it is just thrown it is not eaten i don't know whether there is truth behind it or it is just uh, uh, a propaganda against uh, china but i feel that these are the things which we uh, need to further uh, 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 explore uh, then uh, i really felt uh, very very happy to uh, know that uh, publication uh, record of uh, ncap is uh, improving now paper are coming in international journals uh, high impact uh, journals but i also feel that uh, publicity is equally important as publication <laughs> so we also need to i think uh, uh, pay some attention to uh, publicizing our work making our work uh, applicable to address uh, problem of the country uh, that is uh, uh, very very uh, uh, important another thing which i thought i will share with you uh, today on this important occasion of foundation day of uh, niap uh, is that uh, if you look at uh, india and globally there was a time when economist used to dominate important position decision makings but from last couple of years the 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 economics and economists are coming under question so many people they have started telling economist as a storyteller there was also article some time back which just said that why there should be nobel prize for economics i think rather than taking these things criticizing those people it's our duty that we need to prove our worth we need to show to those people who have started criticizing science of economics that what is our value and what is uh, our worth so that uh, responsibility lie on all of us particularly in niap because it is a leading institute in the country in the field of uh, uh, agriculture economics that uh, how we can prove uh, our worth and how we can uh, improve uh, uh, our worth secondly i also feel that uh, we are uh, living through interesting times because many a times we don't have uh, uh, exciting or uh, 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 very uh, challenging uh, research agenda but if you look at the development in the last uh, one or two years you just find that lot of challenges have come and uh, and and these challenges are an opportunity for a good academic institute uh, and good researcher to show that uh, that this is what they can contribute so first of all this covid 19 this itself uh, is a very very uh, big uh, challenge how ultimately uh, everything will get uh, adjusted uh, because of changes uh which are related to covid is uh, important and secondly these three reform which have been done about which uma ji talked uh, at uh, length uh i think that is another great opportunity for academic institute like uh, like uh, nia to talk about these i see lot of uh, papers coming uh, uma ji also talked about uh, paper by sudha narayanan i think uh, it was in uh, bayer i also read what she writes at uh, couple of couple of uh, places so you just find that a lot of people who were inactive before these reform they have also started writing uh, against these uh, reform so i am not saying that you write in favor of these new acts or against these acts 
but you write about these acts that is very very important that will show that you are also in currency this is something important going on otherwise uh, somebody may take note of it that it is such a reputed institute so much important development has happened in the country but nothing came from there so do not take this as a criticism uh, i am just one of you so i am just suggesting these thing to increase our currency to increase our credibility and to increase our uh, public डिस्कनेक्ट हो गए साहब it seems he got disconnected uh, yes, no he is there he is there yes, okay yeah he is coming hello ha huh, sir it's clear ha ha but then uh, ministry of power told us that there is no need for you to include it we have already included it in a much more comprehensive sense so now we have selected that as giving performance incentive uh, to the states so i think we need to have a look at uh, that also what is that reform how it will uh, affect agriculture will it augur well or how it will go because uh, last couple of months lot of public opinion against progressive step is being uh, made so it is very important that uh, we as expert also express uh, ourselves do some analysis and show if this this is not done then these are going to be the uh, uh, likely uh, implications also there is a goal doubling uh, agriculture export 5 trillion economy like this you just find that now lot of agenda has been created for such why economist uh, uh, in our country so i would say that next one year should be very very uh, exciting for you all of you uh, as scientist i am uh, referring to should pick up something uh, relating to this you see people sitting thousands of miles apart dr umal ali and many other in usa they are so much interested what will happen to these reform why there is opposition to these reforms how we can address all those uh, issues so i think we have much better insight we know condition of the farmer we also understand some of the reasons that why farmer may be opposing uh, those kind of things so still many things can be addressed and many things can still be handled so i just want to emphasize this point that uh, that uh, i expect that uh, uh, good research uh, should uh, come from uh, come from uh, neap on these aspects another is about uh, r and d i think we again uh, need to look at it uh, with uh, open mind i am just throwing a question to my colleagues there in uh, nia uh, intentionally a provocative question from the slides which uma ji was presenting she showed probably around 2010 or 12 the the percent of uh, agriculture r and d percent of uh, uh, investment in agriculture r and d as percent of gdp agriculture uh uh it declined this is what uh, but, but but was coming out but this is the period during which the growth rate of agriculture has been highest i looked at data of last uh, uh, 60 70 year from 51 onward it is only once uh, that we were able to that we were able to achieve 3.65% growth rate for 10 years which we have achieved during 2009 to 18 this kind of growth rate we achieved in past history only once for 10 years 
so our agriculture r&d is declining but our growth rate is uh, rising i am not saying that agriculture r&d is not needed so is that growth sustainable which is not so much backed by r&d but are those kind of things so the, there are many things and uh, i wanted to uh, talk many other things but i keep getting opportunity so i will uh, one day come there and maybe we will uh, we will be able to discuss uh, these things uh, in uh, much much uh, more uh, details so again uh, i want to uh, congratulate all the staff of uh, niab uh, for organizing this important event and i am so happy that uh, mrs jai is there with uh, us in this uh, function i wish her a good health and a long life so that we can look at her participation in this uh, event for many many uh, more years and thank you suresh pal ji for involving me in this event thank you Thank you so much, sir, for your continued support and motivation to Nia family. We always look forward to you and have been immensely benefited with your intellect and sharp research insights. We shall definitely work on the vital suggestions given by you. Thank you so much. So we have come to the end of this uh, today's uh, program on uh, Nia's Foundation Day. Uh, at the end of this program. i uh, request rajni ma'am to kindly focus on uh, mrs jha so that you know we can just greet her and then uh, welcome her uh, here can we focus aapka uh, swagat hai uh, madam aap apne time nikala theek hai bahut acha laga aapko dekh kar mrs jha ko dekh lena nani namaste namaskar ji namaskar <laughs> namaskar kaisi hain aap आपका माइक बंद है किसी से माइक बंद है आंटी हेलो हाँ पंकज माइक जरा ऑन कर दो पंकज माइक माइक अनम्यूट कर दो नीचे नीचे आईकन होगा एक पंकज नीचे होगा एक माइक का उसको क्लिक करिए नहीं लेफ्ट हैंड साइड में जो स्क्रीन के ऊपर है ओके हेलो नमस्कार नमस्कार जी नमस्कार सुरेशवाल जी नमस्ते जी नमस्कार नमस्कार कैसे हैं आप लोग बहुत अच्छे हैं आप हाँ मैं ये डंडा लेके चलती हूँ आप हाँ अब ये छड़ी लेके चलती हूँ ऐसे ठीक हूँ आप बिल्कुल नहीं नहीं बहुत बढ़िया बहुत बढ़िया हाँ अब ठीक हूँ बिल्कुल फरवरी में शायद आऊंगी दिल्ली <laughs> बहुत अच्छा लगा आप लोगों को देख के बहुत अच्छा लगा हमको भी अच्छा लगा नमस्कार 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 थैंक यू बहुत अच्छा लगा आप लोगों को देख के मैं गांव के ड्रेस में हूँ बिल्कुल चलिए ठीक है अच्छा जोशी साहब नमस्कार नमस्ते नमस्ते So, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this function. I deem it a great privilege to have been asked to extend a vote of thanks on this special occasion. This day will be remembered as a very rare day in the history of NIAP. This is the first occasion when our annual day is celebrated, is being celebrated virtually, and with an Indian international speaker, Madam Uma Lela Ji. Madam, we are extremely grateful to you for accepting our request to deliver 13th Dayana Jha Professor Dayana Jha Memorial Lecture. You have enlightened us on various dimensions of economic policy and agricultural development. We once again thank you, Madam, for being with us this evening. The very presence of Professor Ramesh Chand in today's program, in spite of his extremely busy schedule, is a reflection of the importance attached to NIAP and entire agricultural economics fraternity. 
We know that, sir, you were extremely busy in finalizing the Finance Commission report, and still you managed to participate in this program. We are inspired by your gracious presence. I would like to take this opportunity to express our hearty thanks to Dr. Tilochan Mahapatra ji for his unstinted support and guidance he has extended to all of us at NIA. We are thankful to you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Dayana Chha nurtured NIA from its infancy to childhood. We respect and love Chha sir from core of our heart. He was a great leader and institution builder. We remember him a lot and we express our heartfelt thanks to his family on this special occasion. I, on behalf of NIA family and entire fraternity of agricultural economics, extend sincere thanks to our former directors, Dr. Mithunjaya, Dr. P.K. Joshi, and Professor Ramesh Chand for gracing this function and blessing us. Sir, your guidance and motivation is always vital for us, and we always look forward to you. Over to you. NIAB has always received special status, support, and encouragement from the council. We are grateful to our Deputy Director General, sir, and other senior officers at the council. We are extremely thankful to Dr. Shichri from FAO, Dr. Anade, who has worked with Jha, sir, Dr. A.K. Singh, Dr. Suresh Babu, Dr. Chengappa, Dr. Padi, Dr. Birthal, Dr. Uh, Surbi, and many others who have graced this uh, occasion. And we also uh, we are also thankful to Dr. Shalin for being part, uh, for his participation in this function. We are grateful to all the distinguished professionals, academicians, and students who are live on social media and listening to our esteemed dignitaries and enlightened by their vision, thoughts, and ideas. I hope a number of issues can be integrated well in the research agenda. We are grateful to Director Nia for his continuous guidance, encouragement, and support in the organization of this event. We are also thankful to NIA faculty and staff. Our deep sense of appreciation for Dr. Rajni Jain, Mr. Dilip Kumar, and Dr. Mr. M.S. Chavan for untiring logistic support in making this event successful. I take this opportunity to extend our most sincere thanks to our guest invitees from different institutions and destinations. At the end, I thank one and all for their gracious presence and patient listening. Wish you all a pleasant evening. Stay safe and enjoy festivities. Namaskar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Umaji. Thank you. Really, very, very interesting lecture. And all our guests here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations to you. Keep it up. Good. Thank you. Congratulations. Namaste. Dr. Chengappa, Dr. Mirtunya, Dr. Suresh. Bye bye. Uh, see you sometime. <clears throat> yes, sir. Hopefully, soon we'll meet in person. <laughs> Things will improve. <laughs> we are waiting for that. <laughs> but Okay, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank, all, thank, all thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.